Do you own your job or do you own your business? For most business owners, they own a job. It's not a business yet. So today we're gonna to be talking about that and getting into the details of that and the differences. But Kirby, with more experience, you can attest to this and speak more on this. So I'll leave it. I'll leave it off to you. Well, experience in it. You just don't want to hurt people's feelings. That's the true matter of it. <laughs> um, but the thing, the truth is, is all across America, people open up LLCs every day. The truth is, is do you own a job or do you own a business? And there's two different delineations on how you know. All right, number one is. If you have to wake up at a certain time, be at a certain location, do a certain task, and you have your own LLC, you own a job. So you hear like barbers, barbers say, oh yeah, I got my own business. No, you own a job. You see that with people in the housekeeping business. You see people in all kinds of realms landscaping things like that they don't know the difference between owning a job and owning a business when you own a business you can pass that down so this is the second delineate delineation let me start at delineation that's what I'll, we you're gonna have to edit that out all right so it's two delineations on if you own a job or if you own a business the first one is if you have to be at a certain time location and place to get paid, then you own a job. If you can oversleep and you know have a couple meetings here, or there, go to the bar, do nothing, and money still rises in your bank account, then you own a business. The second one is if you can pass down what you do to your heirs and they have to do nothing, you own a business. If you have to pass down to your heirs and teach them skills, tasks to do the job, to be at a certain time, I mean, be at a place at a certain time, certain place, then you only own a job. You have an opportunity to pass a job down to your heirs, but not a business. And it's only small quirks that can change owning a job into owning a business. Like I tell people a lot, like I own barbershop. I don't even have a license to cut hair. I've never cut hair, not one day of my life. Besides my own. But I never went out and cut anybody's hair. Because I own the business. The business employs barbers. The barbers do the work. The barbers pay, pay a certain percentage or they pay a certain amount of rent per week to use the facilities that I provide for them to do their job. That's a business owner. Um, real estate, When if you go into real estate, if you're managing the properties, you own a job. You own a job. Yeah, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get the income from the tenants paying, but you have to answer the phone calls. When stuff breaks down, you have to go out there and repair it. Or you have to go call the people to get it done. If you set up processes and procedures where you out in the Bahamas or you out in Chile with Alex, because, you know, Alex be everywhere now. He ain't never at home. And you're still getting paid without doing no extra work. Maybe take a phone call here or two. Then you own a business. And a lot of people that own businesses thinking, I mean, a lot of people that own jobs believe that they own businesses and then think that their heirs are just going to take it over. They're not. I mean, I have family members to this day. They own jobs and some are very successful at the jobs that they own. But they don't have any heirs, especially as they're getting older. They don't have heirs to pass it down to. And I always tell people, don't create don't create something thinking that your kids will want to do the same thing that you're doing. Because they, I mean, most kids, for the most part, they want to do the total opposite of whatever their parents are doing especially when it comes to labor intensive stuff like that. But then they get older in age and they realize, oh, I don't have nobody to pass it down to. Or, oh, I can't retire because if I stop working, then the money stops also. So those are very hard concepts for people to understand, but everybody's goal should be turning their job into a business. 
Will you take less money starting out to create it, turn it into a business? Yes. But if you turn it into a business, it gives you more opportunity, more availability to scale out the business to make it grow. Long as you have to sit there and punch the clock, you have to be down there in the weeds with the workers. You will never be able to grow your business so it can actually be a business where it can go from you to your kids, to your grandkids, to your grandkids. And they're just operating. They're managing the managers of the business. And what I mean by managing the managers, maybe have a monthly call, maybe have a quarterly call, maybe just drive up through there. People that people that got jobs, they know what I'm saying. You see, you know, the higher ups come through the uh, building every quarter or something just to walk around to show that they're present. But they're probably present for that, you know, 20 minutes hour that they're walking through the facilities so people can show them around. And then they go into the bar. They come to hang out with me. So that's the big difference between the two. Alex, what you got on it before I go down this rabbit hole? Yeah, I agree with everything that you're saying um, completely. Most people that I see that have a business, as they say, it's owning a job in the sense that they're a nail tech, they're a barber, they're um, even like an Uber driver. People think that that's like owning a business. But, you know, it's like they're they're doing a service, but it's them. They don't have people in place to do it. And they're just coordinating the jobs or they're coordinating the businesses or the service. You know, like I know um, a family friend of ours, she does house cleaning, but she actually built it up to where she was cleaning at first. And then eventually now she's got four or five ladies that go and clean houses and she's just sitting back. That's different. Um, you know, you might have to be the job owner in the beginning, but eventually you can get to the point if you're doing it correctly, build yourself to the point where you own it as a business and not you doing the work because you want to be in control and micromanage everything but yeah so to, to that point of your family friend right there that's something she could pass down because now your family friend she started off working and she hired people to do the work and now only thing she's doing she's sitting at the top managing those people you know she's probably scheduling out some things you know but now it gives her more time to expand to build her clientele hire more employees expand the clientele and then eventually she's going to get somebody to manage those workers. And the only thing she's doing is having a high level conversation. Right. And then that's how people should look at when they start off owning a job. There's nothing wrong with owning a job. I'm not saying people that own businesses do nothing. They just do a different task. Right. A less time consuming task. In America, the people that work the hardest, meaning physical labor, time consuming, work the hardest, make the less money. So... She's spending her time, speaking of your family friend, she sh eventually she should be spending her time having a higher level conversations, maybe finding somebody else who owns a, you know, a house cleaning business and then buying out that business, you know, acquisitions, uh, talking to uh, maybe somebody who owns multiple Airbnbs, having that conversation to come take over their, you know, locations to be the cleaning service for the Airbnbs. And she just building out the scope of what she do. Um, and then that's, and that's what happens. Like, and I never, and again, back to the barbershop thing, I never cut hair. So I started off as a business. Was it at the beginning? Was it a lot of hours? The manager should tell you, she was like, this dude would text and call me at all times of the night. It was a grind. First couple hours. I mean, first couple of years, it was a grind. But now I talked to, I talked to the manager, the manager of the, the people. I talked to her, you know, we'll talk family stuff and just different, you know, business opportunities all the time, but it's not, we're not sitting there talking about day-to-day -day operations. We're not sitting here, hey, we got to do this, we got to do that. No, it's just talk. Now I'm having conversations to get contracts to expand the horizon so they can get more clientele, more business opportunities and things like that. And then that's the, that's the goal of it. And then that can eventually be passed down further and further because the operation is running by itself. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm hands off on the day to day. I'm just out there just trying to expand. And then that's what you eventually want to get to. There's nothing wrong with owning a job starting off, but if you want it to be a full fledged business where it runs for you, then you have to change your mindset from being that employee. And most people who own jobs are people that, you know, work the nine to five corporate America and they didn't want nobody telling them what to do. 
But the truth is, you own a job now. People are still telling you what to do because you still got to be there at a certain time, location, destination, do a certain task to get paid. You want to start leveling up. So you're the people, you're the person that's telling other people when to be there. You're waking up, rolling up on the side of your bed with crust still in your eye. Like, hey, y'all got to make sure y'all get that done. That, that, that's the that's where you want to be. You want to be the person that's on your laptop on the beach like you see in the commercials. But you have to change your mindset, especially as a job owner, to get there. If you don't change your mindset to get there, then you will own a job until you realize that you didn't set yourself up for retirement. Age. Because eventually everybody, father time, catches up to everybody. And then you hit your 60s and your 70s and you're still working and you're still, you know, pushing a broom. You're still having to go to work just to make ends meet. And you realize you didn't set it up correctly. Now it's too late. So start changing that mindset because that mindset is a is a difficult thing to change. If you want to leave corporate America and own your own job, you have to understand how corporate America is running and you want to model that and model your business after that i mean i don't care if you uh a massage therapist you know be the best massage therapist that you are or masseuse that you are and then you get so good then you train other masseuse to get to your level and then you start building out the clientele and start sending masseuse out to get that done and then from there you know you level up and just keep on building clientele get a manager of a manager we'll get the best masseuse and get them to manage the other workers and you keep expanding but then eventually i mean you can stop there or you can level up one more level and then you just have one person doing the acquisitions and you just having high level conversations but the the key is to have high level conversation that's how you can pass it down to your heirs because again most heirs don't want to do the same thing i can tell you right now my kids i, I mean when i started in real estate I never had the idea that, oh yeah. And I managed, I started off managing my own properties. I didn't, I don't see neither one of my kids turning a wrench, bolt, screw, or anything. These kids today, they don't even know how to talk on the phone. So much less, they'll be trying to do everything through text messages. So they don't have the IPC skills to even deal with that. So, excuse me, I knew I wanted to turn into a business. So I said, let me put the people in place that can handle these things that can do this, do this. Yeah, it cost me more upfront, but it gave me the opportunity that I can go scale out out of state to buy more rental properties. I can go look and do more endeavors and things of that nature. But if I was just left it as, oh, I'm just gonna turn all the rents and screws, I'm gonna take all the calls from the tenants, I'm gonna go pick up the money, I'm gonna go uh, all the family drama and all this stuff, deal with the evictions, deal with that. My kids ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna sit here and lie to myself and hope they do it then, I do this my whole life and next thing you know, oh, I got to sell all my properties because my kids don't want to do it. No, no way in hell that's happening. But Alex, what you got before we close it out? Oh, we'll close it out there. With all that me said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, share this video, subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys on the next one.